This morning, we are talking about credit. And when we talk about, there he is right there, Lee Kendrick. Good morning, buddy. How are you? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. Man, when we're talking about uh, credit and credit card companies and all that fun, we could be we, we could do a show literally every day, as I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you're doing. Lee, you know what's been going on, what's been reported on Yahoo with so many sections of the economy being affected and being shut down because of this pandemic. Uh, this has forced a, a lot of people to be more cautious when it comes to debt. And the same is true for lenders. They're, they're basically looking to reduce their risk by lowering the amount of money that's made available to borrowers right now, right? Sure. Yes. I mean, that's, that's you're 100% spot on. It's all risk management. Um, they're doing a pretty good job with it. Um, but for the first time in a long time, consumers and masses are starting to see that effect from that because now all of a sudden you're getting not just thousands, you're getting probably a few million, if not several million people have had their credit card limits slashed overnight, literally, and just had no idea that that happened and or they even just had their accounts closed. Yeah, it, it's incredible. There, there are miles of fine print that no one reads when they get that uh, that you know that that credit card uh, information in the mail. Sure, sure. Miles of it, and sure. and and some of some of the language that's in there, if you were to read it, says all kinds of things, including what you just said. We can we can bail on you anytime we we want to. Sure. Yeah, and you know, and we're all uh, we're in this day and age that if you don't accept the terms and conditions, you don't get access. Oh. And so, <laughs> oh, yeah. so and the same holds true whenever it comes to credit cards or obtaining that loan. You're just going to go ahead and sign on the dotted line, and and it oh, is important yeah. for you to know what those terms and conditions say. Um, and you know, and uh, it's just kind of just you just got to what do I want to say? You need to manage things really well. It's just like uh, we live in this day and age where everybody's so health conscious. Uh, but we'll still go ahead and consume that junk food over and over uh, again, just because it gives us that uh, immediate rush. And the same holds true with like credit card spending. It's that little rush. You're going out and you're shopping, you feel good, sure. that kind of thing. And next thing you know, your balance is going a little bit out of control. Uh, whereas instead, if you just like consume some health food and maybe cut back on some of that spending and did the things that were good for your credit, you probably wouldn't face those repercussions right now. Well, a lot of us, Lee, are, are afraid to know what's going on. I mean, we don't want to know what our balance is. We don't want to see what our interest rate is. Um, tell me a little bit about you at Credit U-Turn. Where so, are you? What do you, what do, you do? Um, I'm in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, we operate nationally. Anybody in the U.S., uh, anybody in the 50 states or U.S. territories uh, can utilize our platform. And um, I'm a 30 plus year credit veteran. I've always been that guy. My, I've got a really strong consumer advocacy side of me uh, that's really just going the extra mile. Um, spent a lot of time in automotive and mortgage industries. And, um, you know, I try to help out the consumers that really just were struggling. They had some things on their credit report, or maybe they told me that they had really good credit with their hometown bank, but their hometown bank wasn't reporting. So I just went the extra mile to help out those people, but you can only help out handfuls of people at a time. Um, whereas I really wanted to be able to touch the lives of millions of people. So we spent a couple years in uh, uh, our uh, underground laboratories uh, building a amazing product that does not charge consumers any credit repair fees and automates the process for them. So really, we're actually created a our own niche in the market where we're really truly a credit monitoring service. But unlike any other credit monitoring service on the planet, we actually allow the consumers to identify those negative accounts automate some disputes, prepare their disputes for them, automatically submit them to the credit agencies. And every 30 days, it refreshes the process. And unlike them having to go find a credit repair professional or uh, 
uh, somebody that says that they know what they're doing and they're charging somebody $100 per month or more, uh, typically the typical household, a husband and wife, because they both have similar credit issues more than likely because they had joint accounts, they're going to spend on average really close to about $300 per month with a credit repair professional. Instead of that, you can actually take control of everything and get access to uh, 24 seven credit education and credit tips with us as well. Normally I wait to, to toward the end to, uh, to give our, our viewers and, and listeners, uh, uh, the, the information on how to get in touch with the guest, but man, I, I gotta have you drop it now because, uh, I'm sure this is getting the attention of a, of a lot of people, especially right now. Okay. So, um, and I appreciate that. So credituturn.com, all one word, credituturn.com, or you can go to your Apple store or uh, Google Play store um, and search for us there, just credit U-turn, all one word, and download the app to get started. It's a really simple process. We've built this so a fifth grader can use it. Just read and follow some basic little directions on a screen. You're gonna download it, register your account, create a little short profile, uh, it's going to ask you, do you want to go ahead and get started uh, on the automated version? The automated version, uh, you'll just pay for credit reports and scores and uh, the automatic refreshes. So you, we've got a $29 plan or a $39 plan. You can cancel any time. There's no strings attached, uh, no uh, early termination penalties, anything like that. You'll upload uh, or take some pictures of like photo IDs to prove your identity. You'll answer some basic identity questions that you would to utilize any credit monitoring service. And uh, after that, it instantly, with it, within seconds, it'll create your disputes for you. Uh, you can read every dispute letter. You can regenerate letters. If there's something that you don't want to challenge, you can toggle that information off. You're literally in full control. And if you ever take a step like you want to turn something off, we'll ask you, are you sure you want to do this? This is probably has a better impact for you to go ahead and challenge this because you have rights uh, underneath of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, as well as other federal laws to challenge or to dispute anything contained in your credit files that might not be 100% accurate, 100% yeah. complete, and 100% verifiable. So not just one of those things has to happen. So if something's, let's say it's 100% accurate, but it's unverifiable, you have a right to challenge and dispute that information. And can can folks uh, pick up the phone if if they need to speak with someone or or email someone over there at, at Credit U Turn? Uh, we we would love to be able to do that, but in order to do that, we would really need to charge a lot more for our service and our platform. Sure. So we built it to be automated so that you don't have to do that. However, I will tell sure. you that we do have a uh, forum built into the app. So if you ever have any credit questions, I'm sitting behind that panel all the time. I regularly and frequently engage with our clients. The same thing holds true. If you ever have like a tech support issue, instead of just talking to somebody that uh, sure. didn't build the platform, I'm often right there to help you service that. Because it, just like I said, I'm a strong consumer advocate. So I want you to get the uh, uh, best level of access uh, of like support and uh, credit education. It sounds like this would be the perfect thing for someone who is thinking about uh, starting starting to build their credit and, and someone who's maybe thinking about getting that first time credit card or someone who's got 10 or 11 credit cards and is afraid to know what's going on behind the scenes with their, their credit or maybe someone who's contemplating, uh, you know, buying a home at some point in the near future. Sure, those, those things definitely hold true. Uh, you know, I always tell everybody, it's really not that somebody wants to get the perfect credit score. Really what somebody's in there for is because they're wanting to get access to being able to purchase a home or to refinance yeah. a home, or they're wanting to uh, get an automobile or they're wanting to go into business. There's always that end goal. So it's not that I want the credit score. I just want the credit so that I can obtain uh, something that I've got a goal set out for. Uh, we get a really unique mixture of clients. We probably have close to 20% of our clients actually have excellent credit. They just want access to a better credit monitoring 
service that's unlike uh, the other credit monitoring services that don't really provide them ongoing education, daily education tips, live streams, because I'll live stream and we do a lot of podcasts and uh, media uh, interviews, that sort of thing. Uh, we also get the first time uh, credit users that are just now starting to build credit because we certainly give credit building uh, tips and advice along the way. And then we get the, uh, I'm going to say the other 55, 60% are basically uh, the people that had experienced uh, traumatic credit difficulties and are really just looking for a way to overcome that hole that they dug for themselves and they just yeah. didn't see that light at the end of the tunnel. And it's amazing to get the feedback from consumers after they've just been using it for 30 days. And, you know, everybody's path is a little bit different. You'll get some customers that'll get like 20, 30, 40 points for improvements across the three bureaus in that first 30 days. And then you'll get the other people that get like three and four hundred points for improvements and they're like wow how come yeah. i didn't get started sooner so so you get you can get an alert uh on on your phone basically that says that your credit's just been hit Yes. Yeah. So, so our credit monitoring packages, we have uh, two different ones. We've got a light uh, subscription and a pro subscription. The pro subscription is the most robust. It's only $10 per month difference. So about 33 cents a day and uh, it gets your real time credit alert. So if you turn around uh, just like myself yesterday, I'm actually uh, had a, a business credit account that I wanted to apply for. Uh, they did not want a personal guarantee, but they still run a, like a soft pull on your personal credit report. And I got alert like instantly that said, hey, did you just give somebody access to your social security number? Uh, so it's nice and comforting to know that you get that type of information. A lot of credit monitoring services out there don't give you real-time alerts. If somebody's pulled your credit, there's a new inquiry, there's a new account that's happened. And um, like identity thieves have moved on from just being an identity thief that just steals your information. Now it's really synthetic identity theft where they merge people's information. So they might use like your social security number, somebody else's birthday, somebody else's address, and they merge all that stuff together. And oftentimes it's harder for that to be detected by the credit bureaus. But with our real-time alert uh, system, and we're looking, we're constantly scanning like the dark web and internet file sharing sites, uh, that sort of thing to see if anybody's selling your information or sharing it or distributing it in some way. Are you the friend of credit card companies or the enemy? Well, um, I don't think that I'm their enemy because I'm constantly preaching the virtues of how to manage your information and how to do the right thing because I'm wanting you to obtain the better credit scores. Uh, so, so we're not the bane of their existence by any means. Um, uh, credit agencies might not uh, view us as being uh, uh, fantastic just because we're teaching people that they have rights. However, that, uh, that's been public knowledge for a long time. You know, the Fair Credit Reporting Act has been around since 1971. And, uh, you know, the information hit uh, the internet really hard over the last 20 years, and it's constantly growing, that you do have rights. Um, I won't say there's as much focus on that as there is just on, like, what comprises, uh, what your credit score is comprised of, like payment history, uh, age of your credit files, that sort of thing. So there's more information on that than there is on what your rights are. Um, another unique thing that we're really doing too is we're carving out that we want to assist like automotive dealers and mortgage professionals. The, those people that can only help out a handful of people at a time too. So the way I look at it is in a typical auto dealership, there's at least one person that really cares. Uh, you know, it's a finance manager, it's a sales manager, it's a salesperson that really cares, but they can only help three people a month. They might be able to help five people a month um, and or they could, but they don't. And instead, with our platform, they can actually just recommend our service to their clients and their clients aren't having to pay credit repair fees. But we will also for a small subscription, that auto dealer can receive an instant alert that tells them that John Doe's credit score went up 250 points. And now, let's say that they did help John 
buy a car 30 days ago, 60 days ago, 90 days ago. Now they might be able to call it back in and say, hey, man, we can actually improve your terms. Or I know that you really wanted that Honda Accord, but you only got a Civic the first time. So let's just go ahead and swap you out of that. Um, Or that mortgage professional that's having a hard time. They they get like uh, two or 300 uh, credit applications from people with some poor or damaged or bruised credit. And now they can turn around and and find an extra 20, 30 loans a month just by getting those real-time alerts. And providing more value to their uh, applicants. What kinds of conversations do you think are taking place around these big roundtables at these big credit card companies right now during this pandemic? Do you think that they're they're w- would they be concerned that during these economic times that people are using their credit cards more? but defaulting on them uh, for whatever reason it may be, either times are tough or or they're unemployed, or would they be concerned about that? Or would they sadly welcome that? Um, Well, I definitely don't think that they welcome defaults. Um, They're uh, they're probably nervous, uh, pensive to some degree. Um, I do think that they also need to, uh, that they understand that they need to make sure that they keep the economy going and that they still provide credit. Because if you don't provide credit and you just completely shut somebody off, if anything, that's a trigger point that can often cause somebody just to say, screw it, I'm not gonna pay you anymore if you're not gonna continue providing me with credit. Now, a smart consumer is not gonna do that. So this is the part that anybody that's uh, one of these credit card executives that sees this podcast, they need to be aware that we're constantly telling our customers that no matter what, your debt's your debt and you need to take care of your debt because if you don't, it's going to tank your credit scores and that credit score is vital to you because we're seeing a level of oppression um, across, uh, not just here in America, but worldwide, that's unprecedented. And with social sure. media, people are able to share that angst. Uh, and, and sometimes it plays out in ways that we don't want to see, whether it's riots or whatever. We don't want to see that stuff. But there's a root cause to a lot of this. And a lot of it is just like a class oppression. And it's little trigger things like that, that whenever they're turning off somebody's access to credit can really, uh, uh, what do I want to say, uh, instigate. And and uh, cause uh, situations to flare over time. I'm not saying it's like an immediate flashpoint, but it's something that cumulatively, uh, if you hold somebody down long enough, they're going to end up fighting back. And, and it might not be the way that you want them to fight back, but they do. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just thinking of myself here and how there's probably many, many like me who have been so busy with life in general, as if the pandemic hasn't been enough of a distraction where I can tell you right now that I have no idea what my credit score is. I haven't, I I can't remember the last time I've even checked it. And that's, that's kind of concerning Lee. You need to, you, you need to. So if you've got excellent credit, it's great, uh, you know, that you know that you've got excellent credit, but it's another thing entirely different whenever all of a sudden uh, tomorrow you right. need credit and right. all of a sudden you realize that somebody's stolen your identity and they've been using your credit, they quit paying on some things. The next thing you know, now you don't have great credit anymore. And now it's up to you to prove it and to overcome all that. And uh, it, it, it can be terrorizing to, to find that out. So if you have excellent credit, you need to understand that there's this pay to play thing that you just have yeah. to be aware of anymore that you really need to make sure that you have credit monitoring. I, and uh, I had a really interesting conversation. I'm not gonna identify where it was, but I had a, a major news network. I was just on for a media appearance here this last week. And the producer was like, oh, Oh, man, I have to go check my credit like right now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. That's that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. So these so credit card companies, they don't have to tell you if they're going to decrease your limit. Would would a lower limit hurt your your credit score? 
Absolutely. So uh, the CARD Act of 2009, which was the Credit Accountability Responsibility and Disclosure Act, uh, they there are certain provisions in there that they have to alert you, like if they intend to change your APR and uh, change a due date, some other provisions of your credit account. But whenever it comes to limit, they don't have to give you any notice. And if you think about it on the face of it, like let's say they had to give you a 45 day notice that says, hey, we're going to lower your $10,000 limit to $5,000. The typical consumer if they were facing some financial uncertainty, which sure. their algorithms probably detected anyway, they're probably going to go ahead and just go charge it up <laughs> and say, wow. you do whatever you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and get my cash out right now or something. So that's one of the reasons why they don't have to, to do that. Um, so yeah, you're absolutely right. They do not have to disclose that to you in advance. So it is, again, that's just another, another reason to have real-time alerts to let you yeah. know what's going on. And also, if you have some better education available to you, um, oftentimes you can uh, make sure that those things don't happen to you or are less likely to happen to you. Because like right now, during this pandemic, if you've got excellent credit and you've got $50,000 worth of credit card limits available to you and you don't utilize a lot of your credit. Could they lower your limits? Yes. Are they likely as likely to lower your limits as they are somebody else that has, say, $20,000 worth of limits available, but they've got $15,000 in balances that's utilizing 75% of their credit? That customer is much more of a concern to the credit card companies because they have more risk because that person hasn't necessarily handled uh, things responsibly. Or let's say that they didn't use much of their limit, but now all of a sudden in 30 days, boom, they just started charging up a lot. Um, you know, so like in that instance, if you are one of those people that's listening to this and you've got a bunch of available credit and that you need to go make a bigger purchase, make sure that you reach out in advance and talk to your credit card company and say, hey, I'm making this big purchase, but I intend to pay this off or down in 30 days or 60 days. I've got some money coming out. I've got a settlement. I'm cashing out some retirement, whatever it is, just so that they don't freak out and then just shut you off because that can uh, certainly happen uh, much really? quicker right now. Sure. You know, what's what's so frustrating, Lee, is it seems like when you call your credit card company to explain something like that, what you just said, or even something slightly more complicated, it just feels like the guy on the or the or the the gal on the other end of the line just doesn't really fully understand what you're trying to say it can be very frustrating and concerning when you hang up the phone you you want to be able to feel like we're all on the same page here we all understand each other Sure. Um, I, I think that's a fault of credit card companies. I believe that they need to empower the person that they're on the phone with a little bit more or that they need to provide them a better training on uh, how to give uh, consumers the warm and fuzzies instead of just being so clinical oftentimes. Uh, because yeah. I certainly agree with you that, that many times whenever you have that conversation with them, they just don't really seem in tune with you. Um, I, you know, I would tell you that the, that the Card companies like an American Express, in my opinion, tend to do better, but I also think it's because they're dealing with well-heeled customers more often. And I'm not saying that a Capital One customer is not well-heeled either, because there sure. are certainly well-heeled Capital One customers. Sure. Uh, however, uh, Capital One also reaches out to the near-prime and sub-prime markets as well, and whereas American Express doesn't tend to do that. So I think the level of service, it's a Ritz-Carlton versus going to the Holiday Inn Express. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm sure that Holiday Inn Express provides a great experience to people. People, but that's that's just the best way I have to explain that. So basically what you were just saying a, a, a few minutes ago is you're talking about the credit utilization ratio. Is, is that sure in a in a nutshell what, what you're talking about? Yes, which is which is what now in, in layman's terms? All right. So balance to limit. So if you have $20,000 worth of available credit limits to you uh, on credit cards and you are using $5,000 worth of balance, you're utilizing a quarter of your limits. So now you're using 25% of your limits. So that's a 25% utilization ratio. Uh, ideally, to achieve maximum credit scores, you really want to have two to three credit cards. You want to have like an open auto loan or personal loan and preferably a mortgage loan um, and paid uh, 
perfectly on time over a certain period of time just to maximize the effects of your credit score because now you're exercising a, a proper mix of credit. You're demonstrating that you're able to handle credit card debt, installment loan debt, you're a homeowner versus a renter, that sort of thing. Uh, so one of the tenets of credit cards whenever it comes to balance to limit ratios or credit utilization ratios is ideally you want to maintain balances below 30% of your limits and furthermore preferably between 1% to 10% of your limits. Everything is based on historical data. So these FICO algorithms, and, and um, just before we continue on, so credit agencies don't provide credit score to you. Credit agencies uh, compile and retain and aggregate data and payment history. Whenever you ever ask for your credit reports and scores, they provide you with your credit report. And then in milliseconds, FICO provides you with your score based upon what's contained in that credit file data from Equifax. Um, yeah. So uh, FICO looks at all that data and determines your risk and part of your risk. So uh, credit score is sexier than bankruptcy risk indicator score, because that's really what your credit score is called as a bankruptcy risk indicator score. Uh, so that's kind of a, a what I want to say, a uh, root of thought that I always encourage all of our subscribers to remember in any credit decision they're making is, is there any way that this would uh, increase my risk of filing bankruptcy in the eyes of FICO? Um, so yeah. like if you're the guy that you've got $50,000 worth of limit, and you always have zero balances, believe it or not, you're actually at more risk of filing bankruptcy than somebody that maintains 1% to 10% balances because you're actively demonstrating that you're still capable of making payments right now. But if you've had zero balances for five years, FICO doesn't know really uh, what your financial capabilities are right now. So they don't know whether or not you really have been able to be making payments on a timely basis during that period of time. They just know that you haven't been using that credit. Yeah, exactly. So in a nutshell, uh, if you've got a $10,000 available credit on a credit card and you're hovering right around a $3,000 balance, uh, you're, you're striking the, a, a good zone or a healthy zone right there, especially if you are never late on yeah, a, yeah, on a yeah. payment. You're a thousand percent spot on. Wow. That's so interesting. I can't thank you enough for, for sneaking on with us this morning, Lee. Uh, this is fascinating. It, it really is. Um, Anything else that that we should know if we've got a credit card in our wallet of what to check on during this pandemic? What what, what might be happening that we may not be fully aware of about that credit card in the wallet right now? So um, I would actually tell you that. Um... There's nothing wrong with you being proactive and having discussions with your credit card company uh, just to let them know that you're perfectly fine. You're great. Uh, you might even throw them for a loop if you say, hey, I've got great credit. I'd like to increase my credit limit. Chances are uh, there are still consumers out there that are getting uh, credit limit increases. So don't think that you can't. Uh, uh, kind of a, a segue into that or, or ties right into what you were just asking about right there is that it's also important for you to know that there are actually some things that could cause you to have reduced credit scores that could also impact your availability or access to credit or credit limits. And those are basic little small things like uh, mismatched personal information. So if you have uh, yeah. personal information in your credit profiles that your names are misspelled, you've got old obsolete addresses, maybe the address isn't in there correctly, your socials not matching, birthdays not matching, that sort of thing. Uh, that information in and of itself, you might not have anything wrong with your credit at all. But if you've got personally mismatched information, it can be dinging your credit scores because yeah. you that is also a demonstrator risk of potential identity theft that's occurred to you. And so now that's also FICO is going to view that as also more risk of potential bankruptcy. And just by cleaning up personal information, we had a customer here recently who heard credit scores went up uh, right at 150 points just in like a 30 day period from cleaning up mismatched personal information. And the same, and I, I want to uh, talk 
real quick about HELOCs. If you have a home equity line of credit, they're treated as a revolving line of credit, which is the same way that a credit card is, as a revolving line of credit, because you can dip into a HELOC and borrow against that any point in time that you want to. Sure, initially, sure. when if you first take out that HELOC, and let's say it was a $50,000 home equity line of credit, your first draw, if it's $50,000, now you've got a maxed out revolving line of credit and that can tank your credit scores. So uh, it's so it's not just credit cards, it's revolving accounts. So revolving you need to be aware accounts. of what's going on with your revolving accounts, yes. And so many of us have that home equity line uh, that's sitting there available to us. Carrot dangling in front of the nose, Lee. Yep, you're exactly right. Wow. Uh, Lee, thank you. Uh, Lee Kendrick is a debt and credit card expert, credit expert, I should say, and the founder of Credit U-Turn, which is a, as you heard this morning, a fully automated do-it-yourself mobile credit repair solution for any of you that are concerned. And I'll tell you what, if you're watching, if you're listening this morning and you're not concerned, you really ought to take five or 10 minutes of your day, carve out some time and just check it out because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes right now. Uh, especially we're Lee, we're so distracted with everything else happening in our lives right now. Oh, I understand. I, I totally agree. And, uh, I, you know, and I think that's a very valuable uh, message that you're sending out to all of your listeners and viewers right now, uh, because it is uh, tantamount to uh, everything that you're doing right now. That credit score dictates so much of what you can accomplish. Uh, you know, uh, credit is a tool, if, as long as it's used the right way. It's a phenomenal tool that allows you to get access to things that you might not have been able to get access to. Maybe it's a, just a great deal on something that you're going to be able to turn around and flip. You're buying real estate, whatever it is. But if you don't have the right three-digit score, uh, you're screwed. So, yeah. you know, it's definitely important. Yeah. And it can be in, I, I've heard some people say it can be just as important as your, your overall physical health. Uh, definitely, definitely. And I, I actually think that's a, uh, a, a underlying factor uh, as to whether or not you actually have good health because it, it's just, yeah. very, it's extremely stressful. And whenever you've got stress, stress is never a good thing for you. I've seen so many people just take a 180 uh, turn for the worst, just, just from stress. Sure, sure. One more time on how folks can check out Credit U-Turn. So they go to their Apple store or Google Play store, search for Credit U-Turn, all one word, download the app, register, get started. Or you could go to credituturn.com. There's some FAQs on the page. There's a full breakdown of the packages, what each of the packages does that's available to you. And you can uh, click the link there to start your registration and download process straight from the site. Wow. Thank you so much. My friend, I really appreciate you uh, getting up early with us this morning and coming on. I really do. All right. Well, hey, thanks for having me, JD, and I uh, would love to come back on sometime in the future. Anytime, man. I I I'm thinking of more questions right now, but uh, we we should we should do this. We should make it a regular thing because it's it's critical information, and I, I think there's a lot of secrets with the uh, with with the credit card companies out there that is is not always in the uh you know in the consumer's uh best interest so sure uh appreciate your time my man thank you so much lee all right okay well you have a great day all right and you said you're in kentucky right yes we're in lexington kentucky wow wow uh thank you lee